Are you a mom who loves fun, momming, and protecting your family? If you want to meet some of the most amazing people from all over the gun world and beyond, you are in the right place. Tune in for encouragement and sometimes just courage for moms and women just like you who are curious about shooting but are intimidated or just don't know where to start. Hey, all you tough mothers out there. Uh, I have a really cool guest with me today, Steve Cleverly from Spectre Concealment. Uh, it is an Austin area based Kydex holster and accessory manufacturer with strong ties to the law enforcement and veteran community. Uh, Stephen prides himself on making the most functional and durable uh, concealment products in the industry. And he's also a sponsor of a girl and a gun club. Steven, thank you so much for joining us. I can't wait to hear all about it. Uh, how'd you get well, started and kind of what do you guys do? Um, it's kind of a funny story. Uh, almost five years to the day, I was working at General Motors up in Wentzville, Missouri. And I think we were on breakdown and I was talking to one of my guys on the line and he just up uh, blue said, you know, Hey, what do you know about Kydex? And at that point in time, I literally knew it was plastic. You heated it and you made stuff with it. Uh, I was more into the hunting realm, more so than the tactical at that point. And more we got talking, he was getting ready to start his FFL. And there was a local company, uh, I was oddly enough, Spectre, that was owned by a guy named John Stevenson. Uh, he was looking to get out of the business. And uh, it was it was prime time opportunity for us to uh, get in that type of market. That's awesome. So how did you like, I mean, did you know how to build the, the holsters before or kind of like, what was that process like? It, it's amazing what you can learn on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm being serious. Uh, you know, I, I was at General Motors, you know, I'd spend weekends. I, we literally started making product out of an eight by eight garage. Um, so, you know, going online, uh, checking out what other people were doing in the industry, learning some basic stuff off of video. Uh, then we just kind of escalated it from there. That's really cool. So for the uninitiated, what's the difference between Kydex and other traditional holsters? Well, obviously you have leather. Um, that's kind of the old school way of doing things. Uh, problem with leather is it holds oil real, real bad. Um, and also 90% of them don't have good adjustable retention. Um, you know, I, I always use the term Kydex as, as kind of like the band-aid of the holster industry. Um, the reason being is there's like 15 different materials that you can use. I don't particularly use Kydex. Um, I use a product called Bolteron, which is basically the same th stuff your dashboard's made out of. It's the same stuff that overhead compartments are made out of. It takes heat and takes impact so much better than Kydex. And, you know, that's the ultimate goal is so this stuff doesn't crack under the pressure. Oh, that's really cool. So with the different holsters, like, are there just different models or like just if different size guns fit? Like kind of how does that whole work? Yeah, I mean, anytime I see a product, and I don't, I don't know, I'm just going to throw a name out there, you know, say Joe Blow is, is marketing a product that fits multiple guns, stay away from it. Um, generally, any kind of thermal form or any kind of holster should fit the specific gun that you're buying it for. Um, that way, you know that, you know, everything's molded to fit that particular firearm, and it's not going to not gonna fail, or the gun's not going to fall out. Good. Good to know. Um, and so like, are there any things that like you recommend people like know, like when getting a holster, like what do they really need out of that holster? Like what's, what makes a good holster versus a bad holster? Well, um, my big thing is the thickness of the material. Kind of the industry standard is 0 0.08. Um, that's a little bit too thin. You know, obviously we make a ton of specialty prints and actually I came across this talking with another bender. Um, he stares away from that, that, uh, that thickness of material. It's just too flimsy, uh, in the heat of Texas, you know, it's 105 out right now. That's why I'm indoors talking to you instead of, <laughs> uh, you know, you get out of the car, you go into the store, you know, you lock your, your firearm in your car. Well, odds are your holster is going to lose retention. If you use a thinner material, um, watch out for the eBay holsters that are 39.95. Anybody that's making holsters for 39.95 is literally selling garbage. Um, it's no. you get what you pay for. It, it's no different than going buying a set of golf clubs. You know, you're, you're going to get the tailor made or you're going to get the, the Walmart special. Um, but you know, the thicker the material, what they're made out of, make sure they have adjustable retention, uh, and definitely check the warranty. Uh, most guys have taillight warranties. Uh, I know myself and a couple other vendors, uh, we do have 100% lifetime guarantee. We want you to use it. We don't want it to be in your drawer. All right. And so what is like customized retention? What is that? Um, basically, you know, when you're 
inserting the pistol into the holster and you want it to have some re resistance coming out. You know, the, the big claim to fame is you're going to hear a click, but you also don't want it to be, you know, where you need, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger or, or Conan the Barbarian to, to yank it out of the holster when, when the time comes. You want it to effectively lock and not fall out while you're, you know, walking around or, you know, some people wear them jogging and for working out. That's cool. And do you guys offer holsters that are like on the belt or like concealed or kind of like, how do you? We literally holsters? offer the, um, I offer everything from inside the waistband appendix carry, you know, the basic style holster, uh, straight up to level two duty gear. Uh, I, we truly do make the gamut. I even make chest holsters for the outdoor world, you know, hunting and, and hiking and so forth. Um, those have become quite popular, especially with the ladies. They're going out where it's legal to open carry. They don't want to, you know, carry with a belly band or something like that. Um, they can just wear it across their chest and in the moment of, moment of truth, they can, they can reach it real quick. That's cool. So is it like kind of like a, a band across the chest or like, how does that work? Yeah. Literally the whole just sits on your chest. It's a cross draw. You got a harness that wraps around you. Oh, nice. Okay. And do you, have you found like, cause obviously this is moms love guns. Um, have you found that there are a lot more women kind of getting into like the holster, uh, arena or is it still predominantly men? Believe it or not, 45% of my business is female. <laughs> I uh, do believe. <laughs> no, it, it was odd because actually before I was moving down here to Texas from Missouri, you know, I was kind of going through the market study and seeing where it was at and going through my customer base. And it was predominantly female. And I've got some females that order everything from, you know, the little tiny holster for their, you know, say 238 on up to, you know, Glock 34s. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's a wide array of what I'm seeing out there now. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, obviously this is to empower women to like go out there, get shooting and like learn about the industry and what's available to them. And that it is kind of catering more to women as they kind of get into the shooting industry. So it's awesome to hear that you guys are kind of like creating products for women to use because not all of us wear massive duty belts every day. I mean, I know that that comes as a shock, but <laughs> A lot of women typically don't wear massive belts. So having right. a holster that can actually accommodate what we wear is, is, is amazing. Yeah. And it's one of those things that, you know, I, I've been trying to obviously cater to the females because I can't stand purse carry. And I can't stand the idea of, okay, well, I left it in my purse. Well, I'm sorry, but what's the first thing little Billy's going to go for when he wants a piece of gum, he's going to go for mom's purse. Right. So the whole idea is, is on the body carry is obviously number one importance. Um, we've actually partnered with comfort concealment belts. Um, for if you're going out and you want to, you don't want that, you know, girdle of a, a, a belt around you. They've got a very, very concealable, comfortable, um, belt that I, I mean, I wear it with gym clothes and you know, it's, it's on the body at all times. We use nothing but ulti clip belt clips. So you can wear them with dress pants, no belt with a belt, shorts, leggings, whatever you need. Oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. So if women wanted to get out there and see your products, um, where would they go to kind of like check out what you guys do? Well, obviously Instagram in as much as I hate social media, Instagram is our biggest revenue stream. Um, I, I put po pictures on there literally daily of our products. Um, but also our, our website, specterholsters.com. Uh, we are getting ready to migrate over to a more two way type friendly, uh, web server, but that's, that's down the road a little bit. Um, I got to get caught up with some, some three gun matches and, uh, girls just want to have fun, which is an event in California. Um, one of my three gun shooters, uh, Adelina, she's actually putting that on for women. Uh, that's October 17th. That's going to be a great event. If you know any of the ladies that want to go out there. That's awesome. Where about bouts in California? Is it, uh, Paula gun club. Okay. Is that Northern uh, California, Southern California? Central? Yeah. I'm sorry. You cut out in Southern California. Oh, Southern California. Okay. Yeah. So are you even allowed to have three guns in California or do you have to kind of like import people? <laughs> <laughs> no, they actually, they have three gun matches out there. They're few and far in between, but um, you know, it's like she and her boyfriend, you know, the first time I actually met them was at the Texas three gun match that was out here. Um, I had followed her for a while on social media and it was just a, a whim. I had two spots left under my sponsorship and, and they came out and you know, I mean, they're, they're awesome people. They're like family to me. And you know, she's putting on this event. And like I said, it's all women. Um, they're going to have all kinds of drawings, pictures, instruction, you name it. I'll actually be there. She's actually getting me to California. Um, 
which I never thought that was going to happen, but it's, it's going to happen. That's awesome. I will definitely put links up to that and uh, any kind of pictures on your show notes page uh, on my website. And so people can kind of like join and, and uh, obviously join in on the fun. Cause I've always had interest in the three gun challenge, but I haven't gotten my shotgun yet. So I need to like <laughs> work on that, but I did try ski in Tennessee and it was absolutely amazing. So now I definitely have to go and get my, my shotgun. Um, yeah. Multi-gun is just so much fun. It, it, I, this is my first real live experience watching these kids shoot. Um, I, I've sponsored Rachel Mazio, who's a, a youth shooter since she was 13. Wow. And, um, you know, honestly, and I, and I can't remember if I, who I was speaking to, but I actually uh, watched her live in Texas for the first time since, you know, getting to know her and I'm man enough to know, I, you know, tell you that I was choked up watching it. It was, it was awesome. Oh, that's so cool. And I love that. I love that. Like you sponsor a girl in a gun club and that you're kind of like ties with the law enforcement and veterans. Are you a veteran yourself or I'm assuming you have family or. Oh uh, yeah. My father it will always be a Marine until, you know, his dying days. Um, I've got a lot of close friends in the special operations community. Uh, my business partner is still active law enforcement. Uh, matter of fact, um, one of my other partners is, uh, is prior service as well. I've done a lot of work with the military, just not in a government type scenario. Sure. Well, that's really cool. I appreciate that, uh, that you're out there sponsoring women and kind of like giving back to the community as well as like creating some really cool products for everybody. I think that that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's, that was the one thing when we got started, you know, damn near five years ago. You know, I told Daniel who was my former partner at the time. I said, you know, I don't want to be the biggest, I don't want to be the safari lands of the world or the black Ops of the world. I just want to offer people what they need good price that is going to last a lifetime. So, you know, that that's the goal we're going for. That's really cool. Um, so if you were to talk to any new women shooters out there, um, mm-hmm. what would you tell them? Um, definitely focus on training. Uh, what I mean by training is good quality training. Uh, I'm not talking about your uncle Bob who shows up at the family reunion drunk as a skunk. And, uh, you know, it may have a couple guns with him. Uh, I'm talking, you know, vet out your trainers. Uh, if you're in the Texas area, obviously, you know, we, we offer uh, basic and advanced training at, at our shops. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we've actually got a instructor network that we're trying to create nationwide. Um, we've actually got a couple great female instructors that are on board. Um, we've got um, Emily Larson out in Washington. Uh, she's by far one of the best in the industry. As far as instructing, she does women's events almost weekly. Um, Kristen, who owns She Shoot Shooting down in Tennessee, say that time five times fast. Um, I actually had Kristen on the show. She was amazing. She's oh, great. She, yeah, no, she is. She's a wonderful person. She's a, a heck of an instructor. Um, yeah, no, I can't speak enough about that woman. Yeah, I just, you know, the community is so cool that, you know, when you can get quality trainers and people out there, it, it just seems like it's so welcoming and everybody's really excited to share their passion for shooting. And like yes. you said, like quality training is key, right? Like the, the last thing you want is to have somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, training somebody who really doesn't know what they're doing. And then that's where you get like the accidents that happen. Um, well, you know, yeah. Just- and the worst thing I can, I hear is anytime, you know, cause I'll speak in front of some of the classes and so forth. And, you know, I'll get talking with some of the students, the, the phrase of, well, my boyfriend said I needed to get this gun or my husband says I need to get this gun. Ladies do not listen to your husband or your boyfriend. <laughs> Um, it, I think that's no, going to take too much to convince us. Right. But no, I mean, it's, it's no different. You know, if you're going to go in and buy a pair of tennis shoes, you're, you're going to try them on first. Right. Um, you know, it's all in what feels comfortable in your hand. It, you know, it may not be, you know, the Glock 43 that they want you to buy, you know, it may not be, you know, you know, the in thing in their minds, but it's what f- you feel comfortable and what you're proficient with. Yeah. I, I had that same thing when I went out to buy a gun, I, didn't know that there were like different handles and thicknesses and like different mm. lengths. And I have gigantic man hands. So, um, <laughs> I needed something that I could actually like fit without any gaps in my hands and kind of right. knowing the angle of like your fingers, that makes a huge difference in your grip and control in the gun, which I had no idea was such an issue before I actually went out and started trying to find, uh, uh, an everyday carry, which is, uh, insane, but that doesn't seem like it's common knowledge, which is weird. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> you got to figure that you're, you're carrying this firearm to protect you, your family and, and perfect strangers. 
You want it to be something that you're confident with. Um, train with what you're carrying by God. Um, you know, don't go to the range and okay, 15 rounds and yep, I'm good for the next six months. I mean, you know, continue your, to, to foster that muscle memory. Oh yeah, for sure. I think, and that's, it's so funny because I have a full size, which I carry sadly in my purse. Cause I can't, <laughs> I can't conceal a P320 on me. It just, it looks ridiculous. I've tried it. It just doesn't. So either open carry or in my purse, which is not ideal. Um, right. but I see people that have like these full sizes and they have like a small, like 365, which is a much more compact version, but they like do two or three rounds with their, their concealed carry. And then they do like a hundred rounds with their preferred gun, but they haven't even practiced with the gun that they're actually going to use in a stressful situation, which is crazy. So definitely anybody that takes the classes that we offer, we always tell them, you know what, you're going to, you're going to qualify with what you're going to carry. You know, you're not going to conceal that Glock 34, that, you know, long slide HK, you know, you're going to be carrying that 365, you're going to be carrying that, that subcompact. That's what you should qualify with. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and not just that, like from carrying from concealment and like drawing from concealment and in situ, like I was talking to, um, another trainer, um, the other day and they were saying, you know, like for moms, um, have you ever considered that you might have one hand on a child? Like, can you shoot your gun with one hand? Can you draw and shoot? What if you fall backwards? Like, how are you going to manipulate that? Because typically when you're out, you're with your kids, how are you going to make sure that your kids are safe with a firearm? Exactly. Um, we do have another, uh, husband and wife team that teaches out of the shop. Um, actually Julie used to be affiliated strongly. I think she was on the board for a girl in a gun. Uh, but I actually, when I came down here in January, I went to the range with them just as a fun day, but I was watching the way that she and Vic were doing their training. And I actually sat through one of their classes for LTC and, you know, it, it, you said exactly that. I mean, she's actually bringing the, the points you just touched on into the classes, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. And it, and it's so helpful. And I mean, that muscle memory, like you said, like you, you tend to go into that reptilian brain when you're in a stressful situation. And if you don't have that repetitions, you're going to freeze and you're going to panic. And yep, then, no, I, you know, I agree. Totally. Sense. Yeah. Yep. And we just had, you know, on the news, there was like a very sad incident, um, in the home where, um, a five-year-old shot and killed his mother. <laughs> Um, yeah. And obviously he did not intend to, but you know, it, it begs the question, why is there an unattended loaded chambered gun in your home? Like there needs to be a lot more training, especially with mothers, with kids or anybody that has a firearm in the house. Like there just needs to be proper training for the kids and for the adults. It doesn't matter how young they are. Yeah. You know, that's the problem. So train, 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 common sense, hundred percent. No, I mean, and that brings up a good point. I mean, I got started with firearms at a very young age. You know, I think I was maybe eight or nine down at my grandparents' farm in the Catskills. And, you know, it was my uncle that married into the family. And I didn't realize this or learn this until about two, three years ago, that he just happened to be the firearms instructor for a certain three-letter designation um, of the government. And uh, But it makes sense because the way he taught me the firearm safety basically from ground up, You know, when I went to go get my pistol instructor course uh, uh, certification for the NRA, my counselor straight up asked me, he said, where did you learn the stuff? Because we had to do the demonstration thing. I said, I learned that from my uncle. I said, I won't sway away from that. And he said, that's more extensive than what we teach. He said, but he goes, that's fantastic. And I think that's that's something as mothers and even fathers need to instill upon their 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 kids that, you know what? You know, you see a firearm, you know, even though, uh, you know, your friend Billy's going to tell you that it's unloaded. No, don't believe him until he shows you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, yeah. it needs to be in a safe at home. Your kids need oh. to be trained. They need to understand and not fear guns, but like respect them and understand that, that you don't point it at anything that you don't intend to shoot or destroy. Um, but true. I think we harbor this. I can't tell them that I have a gun in the house and kids find everything. Are you kidding me? My kid can find a piece of candy in this house blindfolded, like, and turned around. If the house was on fire, he'd be able to find that candy. So like, he can, they get into trouble. Um, so being able to have your kids understand that this is not something to be trifled with. This is something that I need to respect. And then like your uncle teaching you all the protocols and everything is just like immeasurably important. Um, especially if you're going to be carrying as a mom. 
Yeah, no. It, as a mom, you know, you, you know, the stigma has always been, you know, dad's a protector. Well, sometimes dad's not around or sometimes dad's not in picture entirely. So it is up to you guys to breed that education into your kids. So, you know, the, the earlier, the better. Obviously, you're not going to take a five year old to the range. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not saying you're going to make them, you know, snipers, you know, at the age of 12, but at least you need to make sure that they know, you know, trigger discipline, they know muzzle discipline. Um, and you hit the nail on the head. Don't point that barrel at anything you don't plan on destroying. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Steve, thank you so much for, um, kind of sharing your story and kind of how you got into, uh, making all the holsters and kind of what you're doing and girl in the gun club and that three gun competition. I'm super excited. Uh, if you post mm-hmm. any videos of any of that, um, I definitely want to like put links on your show notes page. Is there anything else that you want to share with, um, our tough mothers out there before I, uh, I say our, our farewells? <laughs> um, actually, before I, I need to stop you, Addie's event is not a three gun. It's just literally a woman's range day. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, it's just going to be instruction. It's going to be more fun, but no, I'm going to generation three, which is next weekend. Um, no, as far as, uh, you ladies are concerned, like I said, you know, you definitely practice with what you plan on carrying. Um, you don't necessarily need to buy my product. I would love for you to buy my product. Um, but if you ever have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me on social media. Uh, Spectre Holsters is my thing on Instagram, or you can reach out via our website. You can just do a contact us and uh, it'll come straight to me. Uh, also, one last thing, uh, we are doing a raffle for the 14th Hour Foundation. Uh, it is going on right now, and I actually will be doing the, the drawing live at Addie's event. Um, if you're not familiar with the 14th Hour Foundation, Chris Pirano, who is uh, one of the, the guys over in Benghazi, uh, he started that foundation when he got back. It's doing some miraculous thing for our vets. Um, he's, he's literally working miracles, uh, getting the guys and the gals, uh, the help they need when they get back on, on state side ground. Uh, I believe firmly in the event. I believe, believe firmly in Chris and his, his beliefs. So if you guys want to enter, the link is on our, our website and it's also on social media. Awesome. Thank you so much, Steve. Ladies, uh, definitely check out Spectre Holsters online. Follow them on Instagram. Check out what they have to say. Reach out to Steve if you have any questions. And that raffle sounds amazing to a wonderful cause. Um, So get involved, help our community, especially our veterans. Like they just, they need our support and our love because they've sacrificed so much. And we are just so grateful for that. So thank you, Steve. I really appreciate it. You heard it. (laughs) Thanks. Ladies, you heard it. Get out there, get some training, get some quality equipment. Spectre Holsters is a great way to start and reach out to the community and get help. And most importantly, be not afraid. Great job. You made it to the end. You are one tough mother. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to support the work that we do and keep the good loving coming, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you're listening. What's that? You're one of those crazy mother followers that wants more of this nonsense? You got it. Subscribe to the Moms Love Guns YouTube channel, follow us at Moms Love Guns on Instagram, and join our free private Facebook group to connect with other women just like you in an encouraging and non-judgmental community. If you want to share even more love, share your new favorite community with a friend or all of your friends, maybe even a few enemies just to be safe. Get out there, overcome your fears, be not afraid. You have got this.